your neighbor. Tell your neighbor it's a new month. Amen. I hope, I hope nobody fooled you on 1st of April. I hope you are covered. Amen. Look at your neighbor. If you're near somebody, tell them you're looking good. Better than yesterday. And tomorrow, you will shine in Jesus' name. Meta, meta. Sparkle, sparkle. Shiny, shiny. Wear shades. Don't forget some my coffee. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the joy and the opportunity of receiving your word. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. So, Lord, there is a word for us this month. There's a word for us this evening. Wherever we are connecting, whether here in person, online, wherever we are, may the word of God minister to you in a very special way tonight. And may God receive the glory and the praise. Because we have prayed in Jesus' name and God's people said, Amen. Amen. We want to read the scripture for this day. What's the theme for the month? Open door. Generosity. Tell your neighbor, God is generous. Uh, then tell them God is very generous. And tell them the door is open for God's generosity to come your way. Amen. You know, this month you can become a millionaire. But I if you It just depends where you're standing. Uh, but if you're at that door, God is about to blow your mind. As we introduce this subject, it's a very interesting subject, and I pray that you get time to come on Wednesdays and also we'll be expounding it on Sundays. But we are talking about uplifted kingdom supply. There is a kingdom supply. And it was not created just to stay in heaven. And that's why the Bible says, thy kingdom come. You may be broke right now, but from heaven's perspective, you, are just, you just have insufficient funds. Hello? <laughs> but your access is so much. There's so much that you have. So I want to read a passage here. Today, we are just introducing, defining one or two words, and then later we'll be talking about how to get that generosity, be our generosity, so that we can be generous. Hallelujah. David was a person who came and understood the abundance of God, the blessings of God. And so three words we'll be talking about before I read the passage so that you know what we're talking about. There are three words. Number one, abundance. Tell your neighbor, abundance. The other word is fullness. Tell your neighbor, fullness. And the third word is overflow. Tell your neighbor, overflow. So when God is talking about open door generosity, these are three things that define him. They define him. This is the God we serve. This is God. And David, a shepherd boy, who was even forgotten by his father, became very, very blessed and then became very generous with the blessings that God had given to him. So the passage we are reading is First Chronicles, not Corinthians, First 
Chronicles chapter 29, and this is the prayer that David prayed, especially as he was about to help King Solomon begin his building project. And, God, and David had provided for Solomon. And so First Chronicles 29, 10, this is his prayer. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly. And this is what he said. Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then he began to describe this God. He says, you as Lord is what? The greatness and the power and the glory, and the majesty, and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is whose? Is yours. You as Lord is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from where? Come from you. You are ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? <clears throat> Everything comes from, from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight, as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your holy name comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. Now, before he made this prayer, and he continued praying, they were doing a very serious fundraiser. Tell your neighbor there was a fundraiser. And these days, of course, there are many fundraisers. WhatsApp is full of fundraising. Uh, these days, it's every other day, some of you are keep being added. Hello? Sometimes without your consent, into a fundraising group. There was a fundraiser. So let me read this because I want you to notice that whatever he will say is not so much about his ability to give, but God's ability to be generous. So we are talking about open door generosity, and God wants to bless you. One of the biggest lies that we have faced in Christianity is that Christians are supposed to be poor. In fact, there are people who take the vow of poverty. And it makes them feel holy that they have taken a vow of poverty. That's a, that's a serious lie. Because, let me tell you this, the God we serve is not a God of poverty. Hello? Hello? We're going to be talking about this because I want to tell you this. In this month of April, God is about to bless you big time. Amen. But I want to also say, as we are talking about this, that many of us are allergic to God being generous to us. And so even before God gives us, we are already telling him, don't give me a lot. Give me just enough to survive. Let me tell you this. God doesn't want you to survive. God wants you to thrive. So let me tell somebody, tell your neighbor, God does not want you to survive. God wants you to thrive. Now, the other lie that we have through the years <clears throat> is here on earth, we should just make it because all the wealth we have is in heaven. 
And so when we get to heaven, these people who are walking around feeling they're very wealthy, to tower show, see your siku, that Sisi Pia took a wealthy. Let me tell you this. God's abundance is not just for him, it's for you. I want to show you that David loved Solomon so much that God, David gave Solomon whatever he needed. And I want you to know that God loves you so much, he wants to give you all that you need. But one of the challenges you will find that we don't have capacity to receive what he has in store for us. And that capacity is not in your pockets. That capacity is in your mind. Hello? We, that capacity is in your mind. And so if you come to God with a capacity of a, a tablespoon, when God comes to fill the tablespoon, he will fill it to overflowing. If somebody comes with a sufuria, the small ones, you know the small ones? God will also fill that sufuria to capacity. If you come with a bigger one, same thing. Now if you come with easy tank as a match, God will also fill that one. Now imagine the guy who came with a spoon. When he sees the tanker being filled, whose problem is it? God's problem or his problem? Why? He came with what? He should have come with what? And if he didn't have a tanker, he should have done what? Thank you, Jesus. Should have borrowed. Your capacity in this thing, this, your mind needs to be enlarged about who God is. Because the Bible says, according to your faith, according to your spoon, according to your sufuria, according to your tanker, be it done unto you. So look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, please, get a better What is it? A better what? A better container. <laughs> or enlarge your, your container. Enlarge it, enlarge it, enlarge it. Have you ever heard of people who, when they can get a jackpot, two million jackpot, boom. Either they were gambling or something, or whatever these charities, boom, he has two million. They even show him on TV. He's standing with this big certificate. It's written two million with his name on it. That guy has never had more than 500 shillings in his M-Pesa account. He now has two million. How long do you think that two million will disappear? How long? It will disappear because his mind tells him your capacity is what? 500. So get rid of 2 million. Get rid of 1 million, 900,000. Get rid until you come back to your level of how much? 500. That's how that thing will disappear like this. It will just go because his mind is saying, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve this. Get rid of it. Other guys will come and say, Tukus idea. And it will go. The pocket was not the problem. It was not an issue of investment. It was an issue of a mindset. Tell your neighbor mindset. So now let me read this because I really want to begin to prepare you to get a bigger container because God is about to bless you. Big time. So see what David did. So let me read from verse 1, that chapter. When you get time, when you go home, read the whole of it. <clears throat> the Bible says this, 1 Chronicles 29, verse 1. An amazing scripture here about David. Then King David said to the whole assembly, 
My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and what? Inexperienced. The task is great because this palatial structure is not for man, but for who? The Lord God. With all my resources, I have provided for the temple of my God gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble. All of this in what? <clears throat> Can you imagine? In large quantities. This guy was generous. Next verse. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold <clears throat> and silver for the temple of my God over and above everything. I don't know if you can see those words. Over, above, everything. Do you see that? I have provided for this holy temple <clears throat> 3,000 talents of gold, gold of offer, and 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlaying of the walls of the buildings, for the gold work and the silver work, and for all the work to be done by the craftsmen. Now who is willing to consecrate themselves to the Lord today? Then the leaders of families, because now he's, he's the one who started the Mchango. Hello? Then the leaders of families, the officers of the tribes of Israel, the commanders of the thousand and commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of the king's work gave how? Willingly. They gave towards the work of the temple of God. 5,000 talents and 10,000 darics of gold. 10,000 talents of silver. 18,000 talents of bronze. And 100,000 talents of iron. Anyone who had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the temple of the Lord in the custody of Jehiel, the Gashonite. The people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and how? Wholeheartedly to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. And that's when he now, now prayed the prayer we were now talking about and said, even what you have given today came from who? from God. God is a God of abundance. So let me start with the first one, abundance. This God of abundance. Let me read verse 10 and 11 one more time. He is abundance. That word abundance. Hmm? David praised the Lord in the assembly, in the presence of the whole assembly saying, praise be to you Lord, the God of our father Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Then he says, you as Lord is the greatness. So part of his abundance is his greatness. So it's not just money, silver, and gold. Uh -uh. Abundance is who God is. Tell your neighbor, abundance is who God is. So he says, you as Lord is the greatness. That's abundance. And the power. He has abundant, absolute power and the glory, and the majesty, and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. You as Lord is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. God is a God of abundance. God himself is abundant. You remember the time we, we read um, Revelation chapter, chapter 4 when John was picked up and went to heaven. He was on an island <clears throat> where there was nothing and everything seemed there was total scarcity. Then he's taken to heaven because God wanted to change his mind. Now let me read those verses just as a reminder. Revelation chapter 4 beginning with verse 1. The Bible says this, see God's abundance. This is what I want you to see, that God is abundance himself. He says, after this, 
I looked, and there before me was a door standing open. Tell your neighbor, the door is standing open for you. And it was in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit. And there before me was a throne in heaven. That throne is majestic. I'm saying that throne is majestic. Forget the seat I sit on. Hello. <laughs> that throne was seriously majestic. Hmm? At once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper. Now jasper is a precious stone. Ruby is a precious stone. This, this, this throne is sparkling. It's amazing. A rainbow that shone like an emerald, another precious stone, encircled the throne. By the way, I like that word encircled because usually a rainbow is what? Is a rainbow a circular rainbow? Have you ever seen a circular rainbow? Hello? You have never seen a circular rainbow? Now, the reason why this one was circular is because though it was a rainbow that went from here to there, the floor was made of sapphire. It was pure glass. So, if the rainbow was like this, and it is on pure glass, and John saw it, what did John see? The complete circle around this throne with all the colors glittering, perfect. Uh, in other words, he's just seeing abundance, abundance of colors, abundance of precious stones, uh, and God is sitting in the, in, in the center. The Bible says surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones. Tell your neighbor, use your imagination. 24 other Thrones, can you see them? I'm asking you now, can you see them? Now use your imagination because we're talking about abundance. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had what? Crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of what? Glass, what I was talking to you about. Clear as what? Crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures. And they were covered with eyes in front and in back. And by the way, these are what we call the seraphim. Tell your neighbor, seraphim. Seraph. The word seraph means fire. So seraphim, which is plural, is these angels of fire. They were just burning, sapphire, they were just fire. Seraphim. We also have what, the ones we call the cherubim. Cherubim. Tell your neighbor cherubim. Now the cherubim, is, again it's plural. Singular is cherub. It's a cherub. When there are many, it's cherubim. Hmm? The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. And the fourth, like a flying eagle. Each of, of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings, day and night. They never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures gave glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy. Now, I want you to take note of that verse. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created a few things, all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Some Bible says for your pleasure they were created. So can you imagine what John was seeing? You know, John suddenly realized, my father is wealthy. 
Hello? My father is wealthy. These, all these things are here, and his days are the blessing that he's looking at. And let me tell you this. When God created all these things, he had you in mind. I'm saying when God created all these things, he had you in mind. That's why in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, the Bible says this. Let me go to Genesis. We are reading from around verse 5. <clears throat> Genesis 2, verse 5. Very quickly, again, we are defining this God of abundance. The Bible says this. Now, no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. So look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, we did not come from monkeys. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, God made us with his own hands. Then he breathed into us his own life, and we became living creatures. Hallelujah. So next time we'll see at you, oh, CG, you know, your great, great grandfather. Uh, then they talk about, watch out to you. Once upon a time, we were small fishes. Then we became like crocodiles, and we came on this earth. Then the tail disappeared. Then we stood up, my friend. Genesis says, God made us. And we were the last to be made. Because God made everything else. And we were the last to be made the sixth day. Hello? Now, verse 8. Look at verse 8. Now, the Lord God had planted a garden. Now, who planted the garden? Who planted? Who planted? Amen. And when he plants, he plants good things. The Lord had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put a man he had formed. He put that man in a great garden of blessing. God has created you and placed you in his abundance. There's a garden of God that is called Jesus. Jesus said, I came that you may have what? Life and have it how? Abundantly. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then, number verse 10, a river watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there, it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is Pishon. That's the river. There were four rivers. One is Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Havila, where there is what? Tell your neighbor, God is a God of abundance. That river did not go into the wilderness. It went to this land where there was this gold. Look at the next verse. The gold of that land is what? Is good. I think today, if we think about it, maybe that land is DRC Congo. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's on a light note. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It winds through the entire land of Kush. Some people actually think that's River Nile, goes through Africa. Hello? The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of the Ashur, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it. And by the way, work was never a curse. So tell your neighbor, work is not a curse. This work came before Adam sinned. That was in chapter 3. So when you're working, it's a blessing. I'm saying if you're working, it is a blessing. And if you're not working right now, I want to tell you this. May this month God give you work. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden <clears throat> to work it and take care of it. 
And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. You know, that's the blessing of God. You can eat anything. Give him permission. You can eat anything. The Lord God said, it is not good. Then, then he said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Yani, I always enjoy it. It's easy to pick up. Hello. I will make a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And your story, Mnai Jua, Vizuri Sana. Why am I saying all this? God created you to enjoy his abundance. Let me say to the people on this side, God created you to have abundance. God created for you to enjoy his abundance. God wants you to have his abundance. But sin in chapter 3 created a problem. So God had to work things out through Jesus Christ and restore you back to the channel of his abundance. So now let me read this verse because I'm still talking about abundance. I'll talk about fullness. First, second Corinthians, sorry, Corinthians, second Corinthians. And again, we are just building a case here that is going to help us know how to uh, maneuver in these blessings of God. Second Corinthians chapter nine. I want to read from verse eight. And I want to read uh, in the New King James Version. Second Corinthians 9. So let me read it. Why don't we read it together uh, slowly because there are just one or two verses. One to go. And God is able to make. So let me just stay there. God is what? So God is able. Well, just remember that God is able. You may be broke right now, but God is able. You may be having insufficient funds, but God is able. God is able, so here we go. God is able to make all grace abound where? To a Jew. That who? You. Always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Now, first of all, do you believe that? So let me read it again, because for many of us, it is still not yet a reality. But in this month, it will be a reality. Amen. Let me give you an example. When we talk about God's abundance, it's like talking about the Indian Ocean. Now, Indian Ocean is big. Now, how many of you have ever gone to Mombasa? Now, how many have not gone to Mombasa? I'm asking, how many are sitting here? You have never been to Mombasa. Okay, my brother back there, you've never been, you've never been to Mombasa. Back there, you've never been to Mombasa. Upstairs. Huh? Okay. Now, why haven't you been to Mombasa? Huh? Why? Just give me a reason. Huh? You don't know? Are you from Kenya? You're from Kenya? Come up here, come. What's your name? Ronald. Okay. Ronald, stand with me here. Where do you come from in this country? Kenya. Kenya. In Nairobi? Yeah. You were born here, in Nairobi? Yeah, I, I was born in Nairobi, yeah. And you have lived in Nairobi? Yeah. You've never been to Mombasa? Yeah. You know Mombasa Road? Mombasa Road, yeah. You know Mombasa Road? Yeah. That road goes to Mombasa. Now, where did you go to school? Mamangina Senior High School. Mamangina Senior High School. Yeah. Have you ever desired to go to Mombasa one day? Yes. So... In other words, you have never seen the Indian Ocean? Yes. Did you, did you study about the Indian Ocean? Yes. Do you know why it is the Indian Ocean and not the African Ocean? Yes. <laughs> now, 
Your parents are in Nairobi? Yes. Okay. You're the firstborn? Yeah. In, in your family? In, yeah. In the, I'm firstborn. Ah. Uh, in boys. In boys? Yeah. So there's a girl who is older? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Now, let me say this, because I want to tell you this. When I went to Mombasa, the day I went to Mombasa, if you have never been to Mombasa, the day I reached the coast, and I went to the right on the, the Indian Ocean, and then I saw the Indian Ocean, my mind just suddenly exploded. I saw... I could not imagine there was so much water because the, a lot of the water I used to see was Nairobi River. I'm telling you, <laughs> my mind shifted. This, I could not, I could not see. I, then I started seeing ships coming from a distance. And I said, this ocean, you look this side, you see it. You look that side, you see it. It is just gone, gone, gone. Then one day, I realized what I had seen, I had not even seen. God gave me an opportunity to one day to go to Australia. So we went with 10 pastors to Australia. To go to Australia those days, we'd go to um, Zimbabwe, to Harare, then take a plane from Harare across the Indian Ocean to the first port in Australia called Perth. We were over the Indian Ocean for 11 hours in a plane. Wah, wah. To go cool a breakfast. Wah, wah. To go cool a lunch. Wah. We are still over the Indian Ocean. I said, this thing is not ending. That's when I realized the Indian Ocean, the water in the Indian Ocean, it's, it's abundant. How many tankers do you think can empty the Indian Ocean? <laughs> huh? It's, it's, not, it's not possible. What, what I'm trying to tell you is open your imagination. Now, currently, what are you doing? Uh, I'm in Inda. You're in Inda? Yeah. Okay. So you just finished high school, waiting to go to uni. Okay. Would you like one day to go to Mombasa? Yes. <laughs> uh, because we are, going to, we, are going to, we are going to take you to Mombasa. Yes. Because we want you to see. I <laughs> uh, want you to see this Indian Ocean so that you can see when we talk of abundance, you're not, you're, you don't have a mindset of Nairobi River. You are seeing... Abundance, maji, maji, maji. Uh, that's why sometimes your mind of God is so restricted because of where you are. So, somebody here has heard about you're not, you've never been to Mombasa. They are saying they're, they're, you're, you're going to get a trip to Mombasa to just go. Maskia. So we'll get your name. Uh, so we we'll sit down, find out how you can go to Mombasa. Uh, so that, to just see the ocean. Yes. <laughs> because it will change your mind. It will blow your mind. Tell your neighbor, your mind needs to be transformed. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we'll talk after the service. We'll find a way of how you can go to Mombasa. Amen. God bless you. So, look at your neighbor who actually said he has been to Mombasa. <laughs> now, ask that neighbor, when you are there, did you see the Indian Ocean? Somebody saying, I wish I had lifted up my hand. Now, you see where lies take you. <laughs> the Indian Ocean is big the Pacific Ocean is big the Atlantic Ocean is big I'm telling you 
There's so much water on this earth you cannot imagine. But God is saying, even the Indian Ocean is just a cadot compared to who I am. So why do you sit there going, going to the Indian Ocean with a cup and, and, and filling your cup and, 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 and drinking it and then filling your cup? Of course it is salty. You're going, to, you're going to go crazy. But can you imagine how long will it take for you to fill your cup and just create a deficit in the Indian Ocean? So can you imagine with all that God has, you can still say, God, why? Don't I have what I need? And yet God has everything that you need. Not when you get to heaven. Right now. Why? Because your mindset. Your mindset. Hello? So let me read this verse one more time because I'm about to finish this story here. Somebody is saying, Maze, this story is good. Somebody just got a trip to go to Mombasa, just like that. Hallelujah. And God is what? Verse 8. God is? May God become able in your life. God is able to make all grace abound, not towards the angels, but towards you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Let me read this in the Amplified Version so that I can go to the next um, uh, word very quickly because we are tying this up. It says this, let me read it in Amplified. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come in abundance to who? To you, so that you huh, may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him and have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. May God be generous to you. I'm saying may God be generous to you. Somebody is sitting here, and I know you're sitting here, you're saying, but Ambrose, while you're talking, me, I have arrears. The landlord is on my case. I have arrears. Now, do you know why you have arrears? Because you have never seen yourself as a landlord. So look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, even though I'm a tenant outside, inside I'm a landlord, tell them. <laughs> because now this is what is taking me to the next statement. Because there's so much abundance ready for us, but we are not willing to receive it. We're not willing to receive it. The Bible says about Jesus, he came to his own people, but his own people did not receive him. But to those who received him, he gave them the power to become the children of God. There are some people here who have amazing testimonies of God's abundance and how God just came into their situation and God just turned a situation that was so financially a big stress and it was no longer stress. 24 hours, things shifted. May that be your, may that be your testimony. I'm saying may that be your testimony. So don't compare God's generosity with your experience because some of us do not have an experience of generosity. Some of you, many things have been taken away from you. Things have been stolen from you. COVID crushed everything and you cannot rise up since then. Let me tell you this. Even though we talk about COVID, somebody says BC, before COVID. Hello. 
the God who was before COVID is the same God who is after COVID, and he's able to make all things abound towards you. So tell your neighbor, tell, tell, tell them this word, fullness. So tell them there is abundance. Then tell them there is fullness. Then tell them abundance is who God is. Fullness is what God has. Okay. Now let me read this verse. John chapter 1 verse 14 to 16. The Bible says this. John. And the word, let me read it in the NIV. Uh, NIV. Let's go to NIV. The word became flesh. Now who was this word? Who was the word? Who was the word? Is Jesus or God? Who was the word? You're not sure. Some people are saying Christ, God, Jesus, both. <laughs> Some of you, when you used to do exams, uh, you asked, is it A, B, C, or D? You said all the above. So let me read John, and then verse 1, because sometimes you have to start from the beginning. The Bible says this in the beginning. Okay, here we go. In the beginning was what? The Word. And the Word was with who? So that means if, if the Word was with God, then this Word is not God. Are we together? Or is just different from God. So in the beginning was the word. This word was with God. But interesting enough is that, and the word was God. Are we together? Verse 2. This word, he was with God when? In the beginning. And through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Then in this person, in him was what? Life. And that life was the light of all mankind. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Then he said there was a man sent from God. That's a different, it's a different being sent from God instead than being God. So fast forward this to verse 11. Verse 11 says this in John. Very quickly, verse 11. He came to that which was his own. So Jesus came to that which was his, his own. But his own did not receive him, verse 12, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Now go to verse 14. That's where we were going now. The word became flesh. Now, so the word is who? Okay. We are together? Not all the above. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen, now this is John and the disciples, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Then look at the next verse. Out of his fullness, we have done what? We have all received grace in place of grace already given. So, this is what I'm trying to say. Abundance is who God is. Fullness is what God has. And we have received from that fullness. So, whose job is it to receive? You as or God's? Huh? Because God gave his son. He's carrying all the fullness. Out of his fullness, receive. Are we together? Of his fullness. Let me read that in the Amplified because it says it so, so nicely. 
Same verse, verse 16, please. Very quickly. Again, I'm giving you a Bible study so that we can build a base. By the time we come back on Wednesday next week, we'll pick it from there and see God's generosity. It says, for out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace, and to the superabundance of his grace, we have all received grace upon grace, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. In other words, all you need is where? Out of his fullness. So his fullness is who? The word became flesh. From his fullness we have received. So we receive from where? His fullness. His fullness is who? Is Jesus. Let me ask you, is there bus fare in Jesus? Huh? Is there school fees in Jesus? Is there a ticket to the U.S. in Jesus? Are there visas in Jesus? Is there healing in Jesus? Is there wisdom in Jesus? All that you need of his fullness, it is in there. It is up to you to decide what you want to pick. His storehouse is full. Tell your neighbor, his storehouse is full. But some of you are saying, Kama, his storehouse is so full. Why am I not full? Either it is your mindset, or you have never believed that you can get anything from Jesus. For some of us, Petu, we, one, the only thing we get from Jesus is salvation. You ain't gonna find any. To not Are we get? Are you getting me? Please, you are not put on this planet to survive. You are placed on this planet to do what? To thrive and show the glory of God. And I want to tell you this: something is about to shift in your mind. To those who received Him, He gave. To those who did not receive Him, He did not give. Because they did not receive. And God wants you to receive. Right now, God wants you to receive. Uh, the, the final word I was going to talk about, and maybe I may leave it for next week, is the word overflow. Overflow is when a river overflows. And so, there is an overflow. God wants to overflow his blessing upon you so that you have more than enough. Are we together? You can have more than enough. For yourself, for your family, for your children, more than enough. God is able to do that for you tonight. But of his fullness, of his fullness, uh, of his fullness, tell your neighbor, of his fullness, have we received. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Stand up, because I want, I'm making uh, finishing remarks here. Because I want you to begin to receive. Tell your neighbor, we're just about to receive. Uh, there's a gentleman who has just received a trip to Mombasa. Can you imagine? <laughs> My sister, come here. While I'm calling her, be, be, be careful because I might call you. What's your name? Beth. Beth. That's a good word, name, Beth. Beth. You know what it means? Beth, the word Beth. In Hebrew, it means a house. Beth. Like Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Beth. Beth means house. Lehem means bread. So in God's house, there's bread. But as fear. So Beth. It's a good name. Jesus has everything you need currently. Salvation, healing, strength, whatever. He has it. But even though he has it, he cannot just give it to you because it was already given. The moment God gave his son, he gave you those things. 
in the next three months? Is there something in that fullness you'd like to receive? You can think of it, okay? I don't know what it is. Now, if you can pay for it, then you don't need to receive it because that is you. So you have it in your head. You believe you, believe you can get it in three months. This month is when? April. April, May, June. In other words, in June, you'll have a testimony. Hallelujah. So, rather than wishing and saying, I wish I would receive, I want us to agree with you tonight and say, Pastor Ambrose, I receive it, and the next time you see me, I'll have a testimony. Okay? So, whatever, it, don't tell us, because these people will become envious. Okay. But then you'll give us a testimony. Mm -hmm. So I want you to say this. Hold my hand. Father, Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I receive, I receive from your fullness, from your fullness tonight. tonight. And, I know and I know that you are able, you are able to, make to make all grace, all grace abound, abound towards, me. towards me. I receive it now. It may look big in my mind, but tonight, I believe for it. And as I believe for it, I receive it. I possess it. It is my portion. And I'll have a testimony that I now have it in my hands. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, watch that space. God bless you. Karibu. Amen. 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 <clears throat> While I was praying, I hope you were praying. Amen. I hope you are receiving. Amen. Because this month, we must see the manifestation of the generosity of God. Amen. Generosity of God. Amen. God is generous. There is, a, there is a card that I have put together. It's called God is your all. This is a very new card, and you're usually the first people to get anything new from Pastor Ambrose. Hello. It has 12 statements about who God is in your life. He's your all. He has all that you need. But rather than just you have a card, we also want you to have, possess a card and, and share it out with someone. Buona sifiwe. But especially, you need this card. God is your all. Uh -huh. God is your all. If I, if I read some of the verses here, they'll, they'll just blow your mind. But we have put it in a park, and this park is what we are calling God is your all park. And it's available at the, at the, at the, at the bookshop. Get yourself a copy. If you're not able to get it tonight, please make uh, opportunity to, to get it on Sunday, but get it and get this message because we are now planting seed in your spirit so that this month will be a month of breakthrough. Amen. Amen. This is your month. Uh, the month of breakthrough. In this park, we have four cards for you and also for you to share. Amen. So make a, make a, make a decision to just have this so that you can be blessed big time. So three things we talked about. Number one is what? Number two? Number three? But overflow, we didn't say much. So next week, what do you think the topic will be? <laughs> Amen. We'll talk about overflow. Uh, just speaking from what we have just said, but we want to expand this. We want to build a foundation of faith because when the two million hits you, you won't receive it with a 500 shilling capacity. We want to develop you to become a 2 million capacity. So that when you, when, you know, one time I prayed and I just said, Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive 100,000. Now for me that time, 100,000 was a lot of money. I 
I receive 100,000. So I, I received, in the spirit, I received, I said, I'd take it in Jesus' name. A few weeks later, after the service, there's another guy, a member, who took me, we went up a lunch, up a Westlands. So we took lunch, then he, he says, by the way, Pastor, I, there's something I forgot in my car, let me go get it. So he came, got it, and he gave it to me. It was a check for 50,000. Now you would you have thought I would have been very happy. I said, Father, I received the 50,000, but there's somebody walking around the balance. <laughs> Jehovah God. <laughs> Somebody's walking around with my balance. I asked for what? I have received what? Somebody is walking around with my balance. And Lord, I am not going to be satisfied <laughs> until that balance shows up. Let me tell you this. Somebody is walking around with your balance. Amen. You're asking too small. God wants to bless you big time. So receive it tonight. I'm saying receive that job tonight. Receive that business opportunity tonight. Receive that breakthrough tonight. Yeah, because God is able to give to you more than enough. Uh, don't, 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 don't start thinking about, oh, but you know, I don't have this. Stop talking about scarcity. Start talking about abundance. Don't confess your scarcity. Begin to confess your abundance. Walk like a rich man. Walk like 31st of the month. Do you know how people walk at, on 31st of the month? Huh? They don't walk like this. Huh? Their heads are up. Huh? My steps go strong. Uwame Tembea, ni 31st. Goja 5th ikuje. But let me tell you this. God is going to bless you so much that whether it is 5th or 10th or 15th or 20th, you'll be walking with your head held high. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Jesus' name. Some of you have never heard my story when I went for a dowry negotiation <laughs> to Martha's place. I'll tell you that story next week. <laughs> uh, I went with my parents to Martha's place. Now, in Martha's place, those places, and I was so confident that day it was going to be victorious. Then they asked, the first thing they asked is this, they're very simple, 10 cows. Actually, 10 cows, there's one more for mother-in-law. So my dad, I want you to show you how the mindset works. My dad, where we come from, we usually have one or two cows. Where well, Kinamata come from, it's a big land, big place. They can have many cows. My dad say, 10 cows. Ah, that is good. Because in his head, he said, if they're starting with 10, us, we are going to start with one. <laughs> so that we'll say we have only one. Then they will say we have nine. Then my dad will say two. I love to talk to Tana Wapi. My dad in his head had never seen himself having 10 cows because all his life he never saw 10 cows because the land is small and things, his mindset. Then the bombshell came. Because my dad started saying, okay, he crossed number 10. He just crossed number 10 because it was on a paper. They had brought a paper. Written 10 cows, this, this, the gambuts, sheep, what, 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 what. So he crossed 10 and put one. <laughs> he sent the paper back. Do you know we were about to be chased from that place? <laughs> and the agenda was my agenda, not my father's agenda. Then the bombshell came. When they argued and argued, they said, no, 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 10 cows, non-negotiable. 10 cows, we are not talking. So my dad then said, since it is not negotiable, my dad said, Ambrose, can you afford? <laughs> All the years I had thought my dad would provide. 
Tell your neighbor, there comes a time when you wake up to reality. <laughs> that day was my reality. My father was not going to pay my dowry. Do you know what I did? Because I had to think on my feet like this. I told my dad, yes, I can afford. Cross that 10, we put one, add a zero on it, get that paper back. How we'll get those cows, I don't know, but my father. <laughs> Do you know after we had told them that we were going to pay 10 cows? Ah, the rest was easy. And you know we had not eaten from the time we came. <laughs> so that's when the food showed up. After we agreed. Let me tell you this. You have a father. Yeah. And the cattle on a thousand hills are his. Silver and gold is his. Tell your neighbor, I have a father. Have a father. Hallelujah. And your father has a big mindset. Watch a story at your heart. Can you afford? Let me tell you this. Your father can afford. Martha and I, this year, well, I think we are celebrating 30 years. Our God is able. Your God is able. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them, my God is able. My God is? My God is? Dowry or no dowry? My God is? Able. So next week, you better show up. Because I'll pick it from here. During the week, read Second uh, First Chronicles chapter 29. Just read it through. Read Psalms 24. Just read it through. Read the verses I mentioned, Second Corinthians chapter 9. Read it through. Just begin to build your faith. And I'm telling you, next week when I see you coming in, you'll be walking because suddenly you know who your father is. He's a God of abundance. He's a God of fullness. He's a God of the overflow in Jesus' name. And that overflow belongs to you. Today is Wednesday. Somebody is about to get a miracle on Friday. There's some people who are going to get a very serious miracle on Friday. Some of it will be a financial breakthrough. Friday. Mark this space. Friday. In Jesus' name. Build your inside so that it can manage your outside. Are we together? Build your? To manage your? But if your inside is not built, the outside will crush you. So build your inside. I'm about to pray. Tell your neighbor, there's a cup of tea after this. So take the tea and don't take the cup away. What else if you And fellowship. Are you glad you came? Those watching us online, I really want to appreciate you staying there. And I believe this God of abundance, of fullness, and overflow, overflow is your God. He is our God. We are building a foundation for this month. May God really bless you. Bwana Sifiwe. Twasema asante. Twasema Sante toi sema Sante si faze tu bana Poke ya si faze tu bana Poke ya si faze tu bana Hewe mungu wangu Tua sema 
te tua sema tua sema Put this verse as I prepare to pray. Uh, Matthew 7, 8. Matthew 7, 8. As I pray. Because I want to pray a prayer where I want you to receive. Okay, tonight. Don't wait for tomorrow to receive. The Bible says in verse 8, For everyone who keeps on asking does what? Receives. Let me read it in the NIV. NIV says this. For everyone who asks receives. So there's something, God is not waiting for you next week. He's waiting for you tonight. There's something you need that God already has. God is not going to look for it. God already has it. So I want you to picture that thing you need because God has it. And because God has it, I want you to now to receive it in your spirit and say, I receive it. I've asked because many of you ask and ask, but you never receive. I want you to receive. I don't know what it is. It may be small. It may be big. It may be beyond your means. But I want you to receive it because it is coming out of his fullness. Fullness. Are we together? Next week, I'll give you some testimonies of what God has done. Um, we thank God that God is a good God. For everyone, tell your neighbor, everyone. everyone. And I'm that one. Everyone who does what? Asks, must do what? Receive. receive. So receive. So close your eyes. Close your eyes. I want you to see that which you, you, you need. So you're not going to beg. Please don't beg God. Receive. Receive. Don't beg him. Receive. He already has <coughs> what you are asking for. So, Father, tonight, we have been painting a picture of who you are, the God of abundance, the God of fullness, and the God of overflow. So tonight, we are not coming to beg you. We are coming to receive. Out of the fullness that is in Christ Jesus, we receive, and each one of us has a particular thing they are receiving. Some of us, it is finances. Others, it's an open door. Others, it is a breakthrough. Others, it is healing. Others, it is forgiveness. Whatever it is, out of his fullness, receive tonight. Receive tonight. I want you to just receive by faith. Just say, pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you're a God of abundance. You're a God of fullness. And you're the God of overflow. And out of that fullness, tonight, I have a need. But tonight, it is no longer a need. Because you have what I need. Tonight, I stretch out my faith I receive from that fullness that which I need. And I thank you that tonight it is supplied to me and it will be manifested in my life this coming week. I receive it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And God's people say, Amen. 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 Of course, for some of you, it will not just be this week. For some of you, it is tomorrow. For some of you, it is Friday. Hallelujah. But you're coming back with a testimony. I'm saying you're coming back with a testimony. In Jesus' name. So stretch your hands as I bless us. And... Um, Thank you so much for coming. And thank you for listening to Pastor Ambrose. 
God bless you. Father, tonight was just a moment to teach, to lay a foundation, because the things you're about to do for us in the month of April are big, are awesome. When we talk of the abundance of God, when we talk of the fullness of God, when we talk of the overflow, my God, it is only our faith that restricts us. It is only the capacity of our mindset that restricts us. But tonight, we are saying, Lord, expand our containers. Expand our faith that we may receive that lo which looks impossible. And so tonight, I thank you because it is done. And now I declare this blessing upon your people tonight as they leave, that God, they will reach their home safely and securely. Regardless which means they are taking, Lord, may the angels of the Lord encamp around them and bring them to their destination. And I declare to you tonight, my beloved, may the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Amen. May the Lord be gracious to you. Amen. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Amen. May the Lord do you good Amen. in the land of the living. Amen. Tonight, receive your miracle. I declare that you are blessed when you come in. You are blessed when you go out. You are blessed when you rise up. You are blessed when you sit down. You're blessed. Your children are blessed. Amen. Your household is blessed. Amen. The work of your hands is blessed. Amen. Your vision is blessed. Amen. Yes, you're blessed. Your feet are blessed and they are taking you to your destination. Amen. Your hands are blessed as they work. They will bring profit Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your mouth is blessed as you decree and declare it shall come to pass. Amen. Your ears are blessed because you're going to hear good things and great and mighty things. So receive this blessing in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit and God's people say it. Yeah. Come on, let's give God a big hand. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. You are blessed to be a blessing. You are favored to be favorable. You are lifted to lift others up. This is your portion in the now. In Jesus' name. Shalom. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you big time. <laughs>